told me, y'all, we come with three scary true high school reunion horror stories. Nick, that's a mouthful. But first of all, my first question is, do, is y'all going to your high school reunion? I'm not going to lie, nigga. There's no way in hell I'm, I'm ever stepping a foot back into high school unless it's for my son or my daughter. Like, there's no way I'm going to another high school, bro. There's no way. Like, especially my high school reunion. I don't want to see y'all niggas. Like, I, I, I don't, I, I'm sorry, bro. Maybe, maybe because I'm just like a couple years out, but nigga, I, 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 I don't want to see them niggas again. I don't care. Look, look, I hope you're doing good. Hey, hey, keep it pushing. I don't, I, I don't want nothing to do with nobody from high school. But let's go ahead and get into the video. Welcome to people, new subscribers. Ah. I don't know. High school reunion just like, ah. I don't know. I just can't see me going to one, bro. Like, what, what's the point? My 10-year high school reunion was coming up. Teen I year. didn't originally plan on going, but my friends convinced me. The reunion was in August on a Saturday. Okay. It was organized by a group of people from our graduating class, and it was going to be held at some catering hall in a nice area of town. Mm. It had been a long time since I'd seen any of these people, minus my handful of friends from high school who I'd be going with. I really didn't want to go because I didn't like a lot of the people from my high school. Exactly. I don't even like them. With the hundred people I hadn't seen in ten years sounded awful. Oh, God. But I also felt like if all my friends went and I didn't, I'd feel like I was missing out. When the night of the reunion hate, finally bro. came, I drove to my friend Kayla's house, and our two other friends Marissa and Sophia came as well. We were pre-gaming at her house. Then we ended up calling an Uber from there. The reunion started around 8, so we got there fashionably late at 9. Oh. We stepped into the party hall, and right away familiar faces everywhere, only older looking versions of everyone. Mm. There had to be at least 80 to 100 people here, and it was more than I was expecting. Being with my friends made it easier to say hi to people I hadn't seen in forever. Okay. The vibe honestly was a bit different than I was expecting. There was a DJ, party lights, and a generally loud atmosphere, whereas what I was expecting was a quiet, intimate setting focused heavily on talking. Man, why would it be like that? People were getting really drunk at this, including my friends. Mm -hmm. We sat at a table with some other girls from high school. It was about ten of us at the table. As the night progressed and everyone mingled and caught up with different people, I found myself feeling a bit awkward as my friends were doing their own things. I was alone at the table eating, and I noticed a guy who I didn't recognize at another table, looking in my direction. When we locked eyes, I looked away, but I wondered who he was. I glanced back for just a second and noticed he was still looking at me. Okay. Next thing I knew... He was coming over to sit next to me. That's how you he told me his name was Connor, and he started hitting on me immediately. Bro, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I feel like, like, like as a lady, bro, like being, like imagine being a lady, bro, and like you so high, like, like say you, like you see a nigga, right, like and you like, dang, that boy, that boy, fine as hell. And then he start walking up, and then he tell you his name, Connor. Like I just like I feel like that's just her name. Just be like, really, nigga, like really, like I don't know, like, like, like I feel like, like I don't know. I, I, I feel like somebody just told me, like, a name. It, it, like, it just throw me off. Like, imagine, like, you got this picture in your head. Like, 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 and, like, they just throw you off with their name. Or just, like, their voice. I know that happens a lot. Like, some, some dude or some girl come to you. I hope his or her voice, like, real, like, really weird. He's like, what the fuck? Saying he saw me across the room and couldn't help but come over and say hi. Yeah, yeah. He was honestly decent looking. And okay. I felt awkward sitting alone anyway. So I really didn't mind him sitting there. I said, I don't recognize you. Did you go to our school? He said, yeah, everyone's been saying that. I transferred to your guy's school our senior year. Red I didn't flat. meet a lot of you. I basically said, oh, that's interesting. Who do you actually know here? He replied that he's just friends with a couple guys who are also here. Who? I asked their names, and he gave first names only. I guessed the last names, and he said yes to both as he laughed. Mm. We talked for a while until he asked for my number so that he could go back to his friends. I gave it to him and walked away. Okay. Overall impression was that he seemed normal and I enjoyed talking to him. Okay. Now I was left alone again. So after finishing my food and drink, I went to find my friends. They were all separated, talking with different people. Some people who I wasn't the biggest fan of. I went over to Kayla, who was mid-conversation with a few people, and I joined the conversation. My friends were all wasted. I was definitely drunk, but not on their level. I kind of wanted to just go home. It almost felt like Go a saving home. grace when Connor texted me, asking me if I needed a ride home since he's leaving. No. I texted him back, yes, please. He told me to meet him in the lobby of the building. So I looked around. Bro, I'm not going to lie, bro. At, bro, if y'all out here letting, like, random folks, like, like people you just met take you home, 
Nigga, you deserve bro. Like, you you acting stupid. I don't care who you, bro. I'd rather call the police, be like, Lord, bro. I'm not, I said, Lord, nigga. I'm talking about, I wouldn't like, hey, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm drunk as hell. Can y'all take me home? Nigga, I, I bro, I, I'm not letting no random ass stranger take me to my house. Because then you know why I live, bro. That, like, you moving all types of wrong, my nigga. And I decided to just do an Irish exit. Too many people to say goodbye to. Make this, make I saw this. Connor in the lobby by the front door. This is a nice ad. He walked to his car. It was a black two-door coupe. I honestly don't know what it was. Okay. I'm not a car person. Okay, okay. He asked me to put my address into his phone. I thanked him for doing this as we started to drive. No. He pulled a couple water bottles from the back seat and handed me one. And he suggested I drink a lot of water to avoid a hangover tomorrow. So I started to sip some water. Suddenly, my phone started blowing up. Kayla was calling me, and Marissa and Sophia were also texting me in our group chat. Okay. I didn't pick up the call, but I read their texts. What is they it? were asking where I went, and I told them I got a ride home. They kept pressing me, asking with who, and Kayla said check the Facebook group that organized the reunion. Then Marissa sent a screenshot of a post made by a girl in the Facebook group, warning what everyone of a random guy who wasn't from our school going around talking to girls, introducing himself as a different name to everyone. Ooh. Kayla tried calling me. I pressed decline and texted her I'm with this guy named Connor. She replied in all caps that someone said that she saw me leave with that guy. And when it's actually vomit now. I looked at the guy, and then I evaluated the situation. I had to run when I had the chance. Run? The next time we were... Nigga, run. Nigga, jump out the car, bro. Y'all can't, bro. Y'all be too damn scared for me, my nigga. Bro, do you want to live or not, bro? You got one chance, bro. Once I found out, once I got that text in, in the group chat, I was looking at that nigga, looked at the dough. Boom, nigga, bro, this, like, what is we talking about? I don't care, this nigga doing Eddie on the freeway, bro. I, hey, hey, he, what, what they call, stop, drop a roll, nigga, I'm, I'm rolling, nigga, bro, there's no way. You're Stopped not catching me. Light. I opened the door and said I gotta go and ran as fast as I could. I ran into this parking lot. Too late now. He Fridays. He got your he address, dummy. Me. He just kept driving. I called Kayla back right then and there. She told me to wait here. They'd all Uber over here and pick You're me up. You're done. You got your address. In this parking lot for like 15 to 20 minutes until they arrived. Mm. At this point, I started feeling extremely drunk, lightheaded, and a foggy memory. Ooh. I believe he had put something in that water bottle to try and sedate me. Thankfully, I didn't drink that much. The worst part about this was that the guy now had my apartment address. Yeah, you're cool. We all slept at Kayla's house that night. The next morning, I drove home. But shortly after entering my apartment, there was a knock at my door. <laughs> freaked out thinking it was that guy, but I saw it was my neighbor through the window. Okay. I opened the door, and my neighbor asked me if I knew the guy who came to my apartment last night and was looking through the windows. I told him all about last night. He was appalled too. He said when he confronted the guy, the guy asked him if this was where Miranda lives. My neighbor was wise enough to say no, you have mm -hmm. the wrong apartment. My neighbor doing this just may have saved me from that guy ever coming back. When my lease was up, I moved to a different apartment in the same community, just to be safe. Nigga, stop being stupid. Like, 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 like regardless of where you move, bro, if, you, if you're going to keep being stupid, it's, it's going to keep happening to you. Stop, stop giving your number out to random people you just met. Like, right, bro, we are grown. Start acting, like, like, you, okay, if it's been 10 years since you done graduated, you probably graduated at 18, you probably 28 right now. If you don't have the common sense to make, to move, I'm 21 years old, and I have this at 21. What are you doing? Lock in. You a grown woman. Why are you telling people where you live? That especially as a woman, bro. Come on now. Like, like, like come on. We got to do better. We got like, bro. I, I'm sorry to say, bro. I don't know why the world like this, but women, you gotta be safe out here. Niggas are great. Niggas are weird. And I'm a man myself. Niggas are weird. I don't know what's up with them. Hey, hey. Hey, you got to move different. You got to pay attention to all your surroundings. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wish it was different. But you got to be on your P's and Q's because people are out here trying to get over it. I swear to God. I'm super grateful. I wouldn't tell you a lie. I wouldn't tell you a lie. Before it was too late. Story two. Story two. Nah, niggas crazy, bro. You're not catching me. My high school does five and ten year reunions. My five year reunion was a few years ago. No way. My high school was on the smaller side, with around 200 kids per grade. So just about Damn. everyone knew everyone, even if just partially. 200? For the five-year reunion, it was being held in a small banquet hall in town. 
I was excited to go see all my old friends who I hadn't seen in forever. 200? Of course, arriving to these things alone can be a bit scary, so my friend Julia and I were going to go together. Mm -hmm. Julia has been my best friend ever since middle school. She knows about everything that I've been through, and I know about everything that she's been through. Okay. That includes the situation I had with a boy named Tyler. Tyler was a boy who I had a little bit of history with, meaning we hooked up a few times senior year. But he quickly started giving me crazy and obsessive vibes. And when I cut him off, he threatened me and got aggressive. He sent me threatening texts, like he knows where I live, and he knows when my parents aren't home, and more. One night he came to my parents' house and threw rocks at my window. My dad had to go outside and chase him away. As time passed, I guess he lost interest in harassing me. I love his friends with some of the, I guess you'd say, weirder kids in high school. Not the athletes, not the cool kids, not the gothy kids, just the slightly weird group. When word got out that he'd been harassing me, a lot of people grew to hate him. I just hoped he wasn't going to be at the reunion. Mm. Julia and I got to the venue it was being hosted at, and did our rounds, saying hi to a bunch of people. There was a solid 50 people there at the peak of the night, which was a solid turnout considering the small size of our grade to begin with. At some point in the night, though, I got a tap on the shoulder from none other than Tyler. When I turned to see him, I felt my heart sink. What? What do you want? He said, hey, can we talk? No! It had been years since I'd spoken to him. Why? And that was the first thing he said to me. I said something along the lines of, hey, I hope you're good, but there's nothing to talk about. Thank you. I tried to walk away. Thank you. He grabbed my shoulder and spun me around and said, you're already going to be like that? Yes. Yes. Fuck yes! What? Yes! Like, like, what, 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 you expect my ass to be no? Yes, nigga, what? You, you harassed me, came to my house, threw rocks in my, at my window, what, you, what, 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 how you expect me to be? Pushed his hand off of me and said, let go of me. He looked around nervously and said, all right, all right, and walked away. Yeah. I could tell he didn't want the negative attention. This now ruined the mood of the night for me, as I had to try my hardest to avoid looking at or going anywhere near Tyler. Did. I would have did. I noticed he was with one of the kids I remember him hanging around in high school. Mm. I got into a conversation with Julia and a few other girls about the situation with Tyler and how he just grabbed me moments ago. Everyone was on my side and agreed he'd always been a weirdo creep and was known for being aggressive with girls. Oddly enough, I didn't really see him again after I saw him with his friend. I assumed he left early, which was a major relief for me. Mm. Julia and I stayed for a few more hours. Y'all, left. y'all, listen, listen. One thing I've realized though, like the reason why, like, like this, is, like, I ain't gonna say this is one of the reasons why I don't go out, but like low key, bro. When, why are you out, bro? You like you gotta worry about yourself, but you also gotta worry about other people and they beast, bro. Like, see, that's why I don't like. Like, why I gotta go out and worry about what somebody else got going on? Like, if I'm at a party, I'm like, oh, bro, does anybody got got beef over here? Like, if if a flyer says leave the beef at home, nigga, I'm staying the home. Cause what uh, what do you, why why do you have to tell niggas to leave the beef, nigga, bro? Mm 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 mm. Uh, there's too many people out here dying, and it's not going to be me. I'm not going to make the list. No way. With a few other girls no to way. go to a dive bar nearby. And then, after another hour or so, uh-huh. Julia dropped me off at home. As I walked up to my front door, I noticed another car pass by Julia's car and continue driving down the street. Boy, what the fuck is that noise? Hold this shit up. Oh, my God. <sighs> hold on. Hold on. I know y'all, I know y'all look like, like, shh. I can't even speak, bro. That shit just scared the fuck out of me. And it was just like a... See, this nigga, Mr. Nightmare, is so good at this shit. Bro, it, like, like, he don't even do no... Oh, like, he just... No, no, no. Like, boy, what is that? Let me turn this shit down. Boy, I'm scared as hell. Hold on. Considering the hour and how quiet the street is, that was concerning. It was a Jeep Cherokee. Maybe it was paranoia. Or maybe I was rightfully curious. Okay. But the next day, I looked up Tyler's Instagram. He was private. I requested to follow him with my fake account, which, yes, I have for situations like this. That only makes sense. He accepted my follow request, but I couldn't see any pictures of a Jeep, or any car for that matter. Mm -hmm. This made me feel slightly more at ease. I live alone, so my worst fear was Tyler finding my new address and coming to my house at night. The next day, Tyler DMs me on Instagram a long message, trying to manipulate me into seeing him. All these years later, he was still giving me obsessive, creepy vibes blocked his Instagram, but I never could have imagined what that would have led to next. What? The same night I blocked him, I woke up to my doorbell ringing at 1 a.m. repeatedly. What? I was so scared. It had to be Tyler. I just knew it. 
I didn't know what to do. I didn't exactly have my dad here to chase him away like all those years ago. My parents live in Florida now. The doorbell ringing turned to angry sounding pounds on the door, booming through the apartment. This pounding went on for some time. Now the doorbell again, over and over and over. Uh -huh. I finally went to the door and it stopped. I peeked out the window at the top of the door and nobody was outside. I slept with one eye open that night. Ready? And then the next day, my friend's dad helped me out and contacted his detective friend. Dude, get a ring the camera, man. Came by you the doing? house and took pictures of the texts from years ago and the long DM from just a few nights before. He then contacted Tyler and gave him a verbal warning to seize all contact or this would be considered stalking and harassment. Mm. So far it's worked. It makes me wish we went to the police all those years ago. Some people are dangerous and simply don't change. I hope he's not at the 10 year reunion. Nigga, just don't. Okay. Just don't go to the reunion, man. If there's a chance of. Re... If there's a chance of running into somebody, like, that's a start. I know, like, y'all gonna be like, I know somebody, but. Well, don't let that stop you. You, you. you having fun. Bro, shut bro, shut up. Shut up. Shut up, bro. I don't care, bro. Like, if somebody got ruined one day for me, cool. I don't think. I got, I got a bunch of life to live. I don't give a fuck about no 10, ten year reunion. No. I was seeing this girl for a few weeks. I ain't gonna turn it down. I'm two I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Her name was Phoebe. We matched on a dating app and I'm eventually met a few it. days later. She was four years older than me. Okay. Our first date was drinks, and our second date, we went out with my friends on a weekend. My friends had neutral opinions about her. They thought she was, quote, nice and kind of quiet. They'd later reveal their actual thoughts on her, but I'll get to that later. Mm. Phoebe invited me to an upcoming high school reunion party. She told me she didn't want to go alone, and honestly, after she came to hang out with my friends and I, I felt like I owed her. This reunion party was falling on a random Saturday in the fall. Okay. It wasn't organized by her school, though. She told me that it was organized by this rich guy from her class, and it was being hosted at his house. I haven't had my high school reunion yet, but as far as I know, these things are usually held at bars or catering halls. We got to this guy's house, and it was admittedly a fancy-looking house. Okay, nigga, what the it had a gated fuck? driveway, but no fancy cars. Nigga, that's more than fancy, sight. my nigga. What? I thought was maybe Who's the your owner dad? Drake? car in the garage during the party. The second we stepped into the house, I felt like everyone was staring at us. More specifically, me. A few people came up to Phoebe Bullshit. and hugged her hello, <laughs> then shifted their attention to me. I felt almost like I was being interrogated with some of the questions these people were asking me. Like my whole life story, what I do for a living, who I live with. Finally, Phoebe pulled us away, only to go talk to more people who I also felt like were asking really personal and weird questions. There was also something about all the people in here. They seemed to be older looking than 28, which was the age Phoebe told me she was. Some of these people looked well into their 30s. I made a comment on that to Phoebe. And she said, yeah, some of these people aren't aging too well. I asked if she remembers all these people, and she said yes. I then asked who the party host was. I was curious to meet the owner of this big house. She said she hadn't seen him yet. Throughout the entirety of me being there, I felt like everybody was shooting me daggers. They wouldn't look away either. I whispered that to Phoebe, you think you she is? said back it's probably because they're Sorry, wondering they why Beyonce. At the time, that was the only logical explanation I could think of, too. It's hard to explain the growing awkwardness at this party. But I can assure you, this was not what a normal high school reunion would be like. There was no music, and everyone was dressed weirdly, not like normal 28-year-olds. What are you talking about? But that's about? the other thing. None of these people looked like they were in their 20s. Okay. I was getting uncomfortable with some of the stairs I was getting in the room we were in, so I told Phoebe I'm going to run to the bathroom. Realistically, I just wanted to get out of that room and explore the house a little bit. I didn't have a drink in my hand or anything to make me feel at ease. I was just walking around this giant house empty-handed, and anyone I passed stared at me. To say I felt out of place would this be the AI? statement of the century. I found the bathroom. I stepped inside, even though I didn't have to go. I locked myself inside just to sit and regather myself, take a break from the awkwardness outside. I texted all my friends about how weird this reunion That's was, gut feeling that wondering awkward. how I could convince Phoebe to leave early. We'd already been there about 30 to 45 minutes, and mm. this unnamed mystery party host was nowhere to be seen. Phoebe texted me, where are you? I replied in the bathroom, give me a minute. Then I followed that up with, this party's really weird, I'm down to leave soon. She said, the location. 
I said, everyone's being weird. And someone knocked on the bathroom door. So I couldn't sit in there anymore. Yes, you could. I washed my hands quick and left the bathroom. Right, I'm going to be a minute. The sitting outside, who looked like one of the younger ones here, said in a very low voice to me, you should leave. That girl isn't who she says she is. I froze for a second. Then said, Phoebe? Raggy? He said, whatever she told you her name is. He then asked what she told me this party was. I said that she told me it was a high school reunion. The guy then smirked and said, do these people look like they're going to a high school reunion? Mm -hmm. He left it off with, and I quote, trust me, leave sooner than later. And then he walked into the bathroom and shut the door. I almost knocked on the door to get him to come out and further explain. Where you go? I thought for a second. I was already suspicious and uncomfortable. Oh, God! That guy just confirmed something weird is Thank going on here. Thank you, go! I walked straight to the front door without drawing attention to myself. I still felt people staring at me as I walked to the door. I walked straight from my car in the street and drove home. Phoebe texted me asking where I went. I didn't answer. When I got home, I looked up her number on white pages. White that pages. number was not associated with the name Phoebe. The name that came up was Claire Foster. The address that I picked her up at both times is also different than the address that came up on white pages. What the? Which made me realize I never saw her leave the house. She was already waiting on the sidewalk both times. Oh, I replied to her text, I had to leave, I'm sorry, and blocked her number. My friends all made jokes, and they told me she thought she was weird and off from the start, but they didn't want to tell me that and make me feel bad. I swear for God, all they had, bro, with me, on oh God, every last one that would have been blocked, on oh God, because look, y'all playing with me, think I could have died, and y'all joking, on oh God, bro, I don't play like that, bro, nigga, bro, what's my life coming in jeopardy, and y'all laughing? My one friend joked Goodbye. that it sounded like I was in the movie Get Out. My friends and family yeah, no. all have had little theories as to what was going on. Some people would even think I exaggerated the whole thing until I told them about the fake name the girl gave me. Mm. The guy telling me to leave sooner than later. That, hey, Nick, that's, a, that's all I need right there. Somebody tell me to leave. Bro, that, matter of fact, I don't even need somebody to tell me to leave. If I get a feeling, bro, I'm already out of there, bro. Like, I, don't, I don't need to be here. Like, if I feel like something about to happen. I'm not finna wait for something to happen. Y'all, y'all crazy me. Y'all, like, y'all mind blow me. Like, y'all really be waiting, like, I feel weird, but I'm just gonna see you something happen. Bro, you got one life. Nigga, that means one mistake, you're done. You're cut. You don't get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ch chances, my nigga. You better make, you better make one move. And whatever move, whatever move you make, nigga, that could cost you your life. But, hey, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I see y'all boys and girls next week. We out. Ah.